Yesterday, Vinny Stock announced that in the latest release of the Ruby LSP extension for VS Code, they've added a dependency view. This is super powerful, but how does it work? What part of the language server protocol tells you how to get dependencies for a project? It's a custom method. Custom methods are a way to supercharge your language server. Come along with me as we reverse engineer it and find out how it works. Right now, this only works in VS Code, but why should the popular editor have all the fun? I'll show you how to wire it up to NeoVim, but you'll learn how to wire it up to any client of your choice. There are two repos that we care about for this exploration, VS Code Ruby LSP and Ruby LSP. Both of these are from Shopify. We want to learn how to wire this up to a non-VS Code client. The good news is that VS Code is just another language server client. So we can look at the VS Code Ruby LSP extension to learn how to wire up other clients. The second commit down is about only showing the dependency tree on Ruby projects. We also have the add ability to show current file in dependencies tree view. If we scroll down a little more, we find add dependencies editor view. This is probably what we want. We'll click on it and dig in. It tells us a little bit about the commit. We go down a little further. Here they register the view for the VS Code extension. Digging down a little further. All right, so there's a send request method that we should probably be looking for. Here we go. Done on line 72 is the actual request. It's sent to Ruby LSP workspace dependencies. Obviously, the Ruby LSP namespace is not part of the language server spec, but remember, the language server is just JSON RPC, so you can give it whatever remote method name you want. Clients won't know how to use this custom method until some glue code is written for the editors themselves. But remember, this is additive, and we still get all the value of having the primary logic for getting dependencies implemented in the language server itself. We now know how the VS Code client works, and that tells us everything we need to know about how to make our client work. We're going to open a Ruby file. It doesn't matter which Ruby file we use, but if we look at LSP info, we can see that we're already attached to Ruby LS. I'm attaching using LSP config, and this is the line that I'm using. Nothing exciting here. If I look in my FT plugin ruby.lua, you'll see that there's no content. We're starting from scratch here. We'll make a variable called method and we'll just assign it to our Ruby LSP workspace dependencies. We have the right method, but how should this actually work in our editor? This is going to vary from editor to editor. We could build out a custom UI buffer for NeoVim, but a more common thing to do is to use the quick fix for easily jumping between files or folders. I think exposing this as a buffer command is probably the best way to make things work. So let's start with that. We'll do vim.api.invim buff create user command. There we go. We're going to do this for buffer zero. That's the current buffer, the one that's being opened when this FT plugin is running. And we'll call it show Ruby devs. So give us a function that will take some options and eventually that function will end like all things do. We'll keep the options empty for now and just close that off. Let's just make sure that we've got this wired up. Okay, great, so we're printing out our method name. It looks like we wired things up correctly. Step one is to get a reference to the Ruby LSP client. You could have any number of language servers running, so we wanna make sure that we're talking over the right client. In NeoVim, you can do this with a method called vim.lsp.getClients. And in this, you can actually pass a filter. So we're going to say that name is Ruby LS. And we wanna get the first one of those and Lua is one index based. So that should be good. We can say if client is nil, then we'll show some error print. No Ruby LSP client found. Otherwise, we'll print our method. Let's just give this a quick little go. Okay, so we're still printing our method, which means we found our client. Wonderful. Let's try to make our request. 
client.request, we're going to give it our method name. Then we need to give it some params. We'll just do an empty object for now. And then we give it a function that can either have an error or a result. It seems reasonable. In here, we'll do print vim.inspect. And then we'll give it error is error and result is result. I forgot my paren. I forgot my other paren. <laughs> and now we are good to try this again. All right. We made the language server quit. So something that we sent it caused it to throw an exception. Fortunately, it gives us this log file to look at. So we'll just do that. Okay, hit enter there and we'll drop down to the very bottom and we can see that there is a problem in the Ruby LSP server.rb. There's no implicit conversion of symbol into integer. Fair enough. Let's grab this path and we'll take a look. So we want line 108 in this file. Interesting. So the request is trying to dig into the params, then into the text document, and then into the URI. These params aren't something that we saw when we were looking at the VS Code client. It looks like the params are blank in the VS Code client, but Maybe they're doing some magic to implicitly merge in the text document identifier. In any event, we can make this happy. So instead of passing in nothing as our params, we will pass in some params that represent the current document. You can do this by doing local params is going to be vim.lsp.util.make. text document params, and we can do buffer zero. Let's give this a try. Looks like we got some output, let's take a look. Awesome, now we're getting back a Lua table that represents the JSON that comes across from the language server. We can see that each of these nodes has a dependency, a name, a path, and a version. Fantastic. Let's change this code a little bit to handle some errors. So if error, then we will print error showing depths, and then we'll get the error itself and return. It looks like NeoVim is grumpy because we're not specifying enough arguments here. So what is the final argument of request? It should be, oh, the buffer number. Well, we'll use zero for the current buffer there too. Okay, now we need a nil check. Which we actually have, oh, we're not returning. There we go, thanks diagnostics. Now that we know that we have a result that is not an error, we can start populating our quick fix list. We'll initialize it as a new table in Lua and then for item in ipairs results, we will table.insert qf list. So we're adding this to our qf list and it's going to be the text of string.format percent s, percent s, we'll just add a little formatting here, dash percent s. You can see I thought about this a little bit ahead of time. And so these things are going to represent different parts of that JSON. So we'll do item.name, item.version, that'll be in the parentheses, and then item.dependency, that will be a true or a false, indicating whether it's a direct dependency or not. The other part that we need for our quick fix list is the file name. So we'll make that be the item.path. It's actually not a file, it's a folder, but I think we'll still be okay here. So we can save that, and that seems reasonable. The only thing we need to do is actually set the content on the quick fix list. So we can do vim.fn.set 
QF list and we'll pass in our QF list. So far so good. Then we want to open the quick fix list. I don't know a way to do this without using gem.command. So we're just gonna go the easy way here. And I think this might work. Let's get rid of our print there. So now we will run show Ruby depths and check it out. We got a quick fix list. The formatting's not great because of my screen size, but you can see everything you need here. We have the path to rake, we have the name rake, we have the version number, and then false because it is not a direct dependency. If you compare concurrent Ruby, you see that the dependency is true because it is a direct dependency. When you hit enter on one of these, it will try to open it in whatever file view you have configured. Here, we're just seeing netrw. From within here, I can open up the readme.md or whatever file I would like to see. Let's make one more change. Let's show only direct dependencies by default and have an option to show indirect dependencies. Let's say nards is going to be question mark, it can be zero or more. Complete is going to be a function that returns the possible values here. In this case, we only want one, which is all, and then we'll end that. Now we need to handle the options for our function. We can say local show all is going to be ops.args equals all. Now where we assemble our list, we'll add a little conditional. If show all, or item.dependency, it's a direct dependency, then we'll add it to our list. Let's quit and try again. Show Ruby depths. So this gives us only things with true at the end. Perfect. Show Ruby depths space, and then I'm gonna hit tab. We see all, and that gives me both the falses and the trues. Awesome. And there you have it. Now you can use this custom method in whatever client you choose. Just send the request and parse the results. It's that easy. What UI you choose will depend on what editor you're working in, but there's a lot of options out there. The language server protocol spells out the happy path for interactions between clients and language servers, but you don't have to stay on that path. You can go have fun off in the wilderness implementing all the custom methods you want. In an ideal world, the people working on the language server would maintain extensions and plugins that surface these custom methods in various editors. But there's a wide world of editors and supporting them all isn't sustainable. After all, that's why the language server protocol was invented to begin with. So are custom methods sort of anathema to the language server protocol? Not at all. These methods are additive and the community can always step in to fill the gaps. Huge shout out to Vinny and the rest of the Ruby LSP team. You're doing a great job. Keep innovating. Until next time.